My guests today are Wilson Fairchild, a country music duo made up of Will and Langdon Reed, and they come from country music and gospel music royalty, as Will's dad is Harold Reed and Langdon's dad is Don Reed of the legendary Statler Brothers. Now, both are highly acclaimed songwriters. Will and Langdon have been writing songs and playing guitar since their teenage years and have written with chart toppers like Brian Kennedy of Garth Brooks, Gordon Kennedy of Peter Frampton, and even Jeff Hyde of Eric Church, and so many more. Well, they learn from the best and are no strangers to knowing how to put an idea to music and come away with a great storytelling song. Will and Langdon opened for the late George Jones for nearly four years, have graced the stage of the Grand Ole Opry, and have been featured on Larry's Country Diner on RFD TV. And they continue carrying on a family legacy of great music, high energy performances, and pure entertainment. So ladies and gentlemen, let's welcome Will and Langdon of Wilson Fairchild and their brand new album, Statler Made, to the show. Welcome, gentlemen. <laughs> Thank you. After that introduction, I'm tired. We have done a couple things. Yeah. I say we, uh -huh. I say we stop right there and go home. <laughs> well, you know, like a great performance. Maybe we need to do an encore. How about that? I love it. Thank you so much. Great to be here with you, Ward. Yeah. Hey, it is. It's an honor and a pleasure to have uh, two of you carrying on the great legacy of the Statler name. Is that kind of a, a heavy burden to carry? <laughs> um new, yeah. sh new shoes can get big at times it yeah. has been um you know what we uh langdon and i have been singing together ever since we were teenagers and uh to get to this point with this new project statler made it really fa feels like everything has finally come together you know we uh with, with our dads being again like you said you know hall of fame uh acting country music we grew up with it that's all we've ever known it's all we've ever wanted to do and uh, when we, we realized recently, it's like, you know, we've never really recorded their hits and we've never used the name uh, out of respect, you know, because they're the Statler brothers and we're not. But uh, with uh, the blessing uh, of them, it's really cool to say, you know, to connect those dots with people that haven't made the connection that uh, that we're carrying on the, the, the Statler legacy, which we're thrilled about. Well, where did the name Wilson Fairchild come from? Mm -hmm. Great question. We get that a lot, and we know that answer. <laughs> uh, that is simply our two middle names. Uh, his middle name is Wilson. My middle name is Fairchild. Mm -hmm. And uh, for years when we started out, as he said, back in those high school days and uh, early college years and playing music, we went under the, uh, the name of Grandstaff. Uh, that's what we called it. And that was had a cool story to it as well. It was an old family name from like a great, 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 great uncle that got captured by the Indians. I mean, it, and we're serious. We're serious, but yeah, we're serious. It, that really happened. They said he carried himself like a grand staff. Mm -hmm. And then we thought that's kind of cool. It had musical, you know, overtones to it as well. So we, uh, we did get an independent record deal year, years ago under that name. Yes. Um, so that name is out there. And if you see it, that is us. Uh, but, uh, when we started playing live shows and, uh, I about I would say about three out of every five shows that we would play when we would get introduced, the MC would always mess the name up. It was yeah. never Grand Staff. It was Grand Stand. It was Grand Stuff. Grind Stuff. Grand Funk Railroad. Uh, it was. I'm afraid Grand Staff infection was the worst yeah, ever. That, that is. Uh, that it is with bad. that particular name. Uh, so, but actually, before the George Jones days is when we changed it to Wilson Fairchild. And again, you know, we were trying to be creative uh, by using our middle names. And if it didn't work out, we were going to open up a law firm. But so far, we don't have to use it for the law firm. Yeah. Mm -hmm. we, yeah. Well, we, that's it. That sounds good. It looks good on a marquee. Or, yeah. or, it, or Fairchild. it does. It looks yeah. great on a marquee. But how old were each of you when you, when you performed for the very first time? Oh, that was going to be uh, for like a talent show in our hometown. Um, yeah. And yeah. we were playing at church before then. Yes. You know, singing yeah. and playing uh, in church and, you know, special well, occasions and, and all that type of stuff. I will say, I think I remember one of our first gigs, if it wasn't the first, it was one of. Mm -hmm. uh, we were hired to play uh, for a girl's birthday party about 20 minutes down the road from the house. Mm -hmm. And we were in high school. Right. And, uh, and it was me and Will and a couple other guys. 
And I mean, we had the band together. We had the matching shirts. We had our instruments. They weren't tuned, but we had instruments. Right. And, uh, and we had a set list and we went down in the garage of this guy's house, set up and played for uh, his daughter's birthday and her friends over there. So in our humble beginnings, yes. that time on Ward, it just went straight up. <laughs> Yeah, and and it's still making them the same amount of money, right? Exactly. exactly. Right, How did right. you know? <laughs> right. Yeah. Uh huh. We're still I, making birthday money. Uh -huh. I I talk to a lot of recording artists, so I know uh, that uh, the days have changed, and uh, and we all know that streaming doesn't pay the bills. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. You're getting paid one point three cents of, right of a download are you getting that much really <laughs> <laughs> oh, he, he's holding out on you yeah evidently <laughs> evidently well, well did either of you ever think of a career outside of music or was music just part of your dna so yes it was part of our dna and uh we've had lots of other interests uh langdon was an ace left-handed baseball pitcher in high school uh, he could have gone that direction. You know, scouts looked at him in high school. Um, I, uh, I was not good at, at baseball. Um, so I was hundred percent committed to the music thing. Um, but we were always enamored with it, with our dad's career. We were always listening to music that came along before us and we're eat up with the, the songwriting. And it wasn't just the Statlers. It was all of classic country music. You know, the definitely the 70s era got in our ear. Yeah. Uh, the analog recordings, but ever all the greats, everybody from, you know, Merle Haggard, George Jones, Tammy Wynette, um, Ronnie Millsap. Uh, we love that stuff. Going into the 80s, you know, Ricky Skaggs and the, the Telecaster and uh, even up into the Randy Travis today, we, we just, we were always in tune with that music, you know? So then over the years to stay in the music business, we've done several things, you know, both he and I are, you know, in the real estate uh, business. Um, I've mowed a lot of grass. Uh, <laughs> bailed a lot of hay. Bailed a lot of hay. <laughs> Langan was a plumber for how many years? Uh, about eight years. Yeah. Langan was yeah. a plumber for yeah. eight years. And uh, did you learn anything? No. He didn't learn anything. <laughs> no. uh, but we, we've always kept the door open to the music business, yes. Well, your album, Statler Made, pays tribute to your father's legacy with the Statler Brothers. But what is your greatest memory about how your father's music specifically inspired or inf influenced a particular track on this album? Mm. Particular track. Great question. That is, you know, I thought you were just going to say, how did their music just influence us overall? And it, and it kind of goes along with what he was saying uh, from from early on. We would, we, we were, um, we were blessed to, to be able, especially in the summer to go out on, you know, two or three day trips, especially to fairs and festivals. And when we were out of school and we would, you know, whether we were eight, nine, 10, 12 years old, and we'd ride the bus and we'd stand on the side of the stage and just see those guys perform their craft like nobody else. Mm -hmm. And, uh, they, they, you know, it, music is entertainment and it is escape and, and they really always allowed uh, their audience to escape from whatever was going on in their challenging lives out there. And it's still that way. You know, people go to go, go to music for an escape. Yeah. And they were always so great about uh, about hitting all of the emotions through their songs, through their mm -hmm. stories, through their live shows. And again, whether it was, uh, you know, high energy novelty songs or nostalgia story songs, love songs, gospel songs. And just to, for us to, to stand there on the side of the stage and to see these four guys do what they do and the way that the people reacted to them and, and, and the fact that two of them were our dads, that was just always so cool. And uh, that really influenced us, as he said, you know, to do what we want to do. Uh, so when it came time for this CD, I mean, we just, you know, my gosh, their catalog. I think the two, our, our two dads were, were the primary songwriters for the group. And uh, I think together they, they wrote about 500 songs over their Wow. Year. You know, the thing yeah. that I that I miss in today's music, you know, you have, you had the Statler Brothers, mm -hmm. you had the Oak Ridge Boys, and here's the Oak Ridge Boys celebrating their 50th year mm -hmm. with these right. four guys. But with us, mm -hmm. the, and then even with the Statlers, what is, what to, what's missing in country today is 
to have a quartet, well, we have Little Big Town, but but with the Statlers and even with the with the Oaks, to to bring a performance to an audience, and it's not just country. They know how to mix that gospel in with the performance, and everybody loves that stuff. And we need to yeah. see that kind of thing come back. Well, we yeah. do, and, and along with, with what you're talking about with Statler Made, that's what made us so excited about making this record. Uh, we, we hear the music through those old days, through those exciting shows, through hit records on country radio, but always including a gospel record. You know, I mean, if, if it wasn't those quartets, you could even say that of Elvis. You know, he always did that. You know, some of his uh, bigger songs were gospel songs. Exactly. Yeah. And um, so, uh, yeah, that's what, um, what made us so excited about this record uh, with putting the three gospels on there, too. We hear them through country music, you know, and, and that's what makes us different coming from the Statler Brothers is, uh, you know, our dads would even be excited about certain gospel songs or certain gospel groups. And it's like, well, yeah, it's okay, but it's not the Statler Brothers. <laughs> you know, our perspective has always been different. Yeah. Um, and back to what you said about the album, I think uh, Class of 57, the song that we recorded on this that our dads wrote together, has always been a signature song for the Statlers and one that me and Langdon never thought we would record. Only because... It was it was it was their peers. It was where they came from in the 1950s, and we would joke on stage about how we we never did that song because we're not that old, you know. I mean, we we just it, we made a joke of it that you know we weren't we didn't know those people. A lot of more truth than joke, though, really. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> but but the reality is that's one of those songs that touches the heart of any graduating class. That everybody knows where everybody went, ended up, or didn't end up. And uh, so that that was pretty special. Uh, people love hearing that song through us, which is pretty cool. Yeah. Well, I also liked listening to uh, Do You Know You Are My Sunshine and I'll Go to My Grave Loving You, one of the most famous Statler Brothers songs. Mm -hmm. Yes. Oh, yeah. And, yeah. and and we love those, you know, with with on, on Grave, you know, we 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 recorded it like they ended up doing it in concert, you know, from. From the time it was a hit record in the 70s to them performing it till the end of their career, it kept getting faster and faster and faster <laughs> on stage. Right. So when, when Langdon and I came along, we loved it that way. We loved it up-tempo, so that's, that's the way we did it here. Well, how um, did you balance maintaining the original essence of these songs while infusing your own artistic style and modern interpretations into them? Because both of you could literally just sing the cover off a phone book. If people knew what a phone book was, <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> you're showing your age. <laughs> that's great. Uh, that's that's good because we uh, we had a conversation um, with our two producers, Michael Sykes and Johnny Minnick, um, when we went into the studio. And Will and I, you know, we pretty much arranged these songs. Uh, you know, we we sit right at this table and with guitars and figured out the keys and who's singing what. And I'm coming in here and a break and that kind of stuff. And um, so anyway, we 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 know how we interpret. We know the originals of, of the the original way the song was sung. I mean, right down to who was singing what part and when they came in. So there's nobody closer to the original songs than us. But we also wanted to. Uh, make it our own as well. And that's a hard thing to do, you know? And uh, so we, we had that conversation with our producers going into it with the musicians uh, the day that we recorded the, the music and just said, you know, guys, let's, let's, let's have fun with this, be loose, bring the energy, interpret the song, the guitar player, you do what you want to do, drummer, you do what you want to do. And if there's any, you know, any guard railing that we need to do here to make sure that it's kind of like how we're hearing it, we did that. Uh, but our uh, Michael Sykes in particular, he told us afterwards, listening to it, he says, man, this music is so you all. It's so Wilson Fairchild, but I love the way y'all tip your hat to the Statlers in certain places. Well, I and was... Whether it was, you know, the drum beat with bed of roses yeah. or uh maybe a certain harmony that i would hit on the end that was very reminiscent of their tenor singers at the time or uh a phrasing that you know my dad would do on a certain line that he would hit or something like that um and it's almost some some of those 
places in those songs are even indescribable. But if you're a fan and you know that music, and there's plenty of Statler fans still out there, mm -hmm. and we're hearing those reviews and feedback from those people to say, this is cool because it's, it's a Wilson Fairchild album, but I'm hearing Statler's just peppered throughout it. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that and is not a bad that's the best thing. review we get. Yeah, it's not a bad it's thing at all. Thing. Now, yeah. you know, one of the, one of the first songs I listened to because you can't help but once you see the title, you're like, okay, I'm gonna this is I'm gonna see what this is like. You covered George Jones's song. He stopped loving her today. Was that intimidating? Uh, I think intimidating is a good uh, a good way yeah. to put it. So intimidating, we didn't want to record it. That was not on our short list. <laughs> We, oh really? We, and and so, you performed with him for almost four years. So and and I say that out of the uh, out of the most respect in the world. We we've we've been covering Jones songs for years live in concert. The reason it wasn't on our short list is because it's such an iconic song. You know, years ago, talking to people in the industry, they would refer to a song like that as a sacred cow. It's like you you just don't you know you redo don't do it. it. But when we got to talking about it, you know what's different about now in this age of streaming? We can we can reach people with that song again that never heard it the first time. It, you know, it's very possible, you know. And uh, so we uh, we did it justice. But as I told, uh, I had a really nice uh, compliment uh, recently that we did a really good job on the song and we paid, you know, our respect to it. And I said, well, I appreciate that. And um I, uh, but I said, you know, I can't even sing it without hearing George Jones, you know? So, you know, we've never approached a song like that to where we try to sing like another person. Right. Uh, but luckily, you know, we have the, the, the range and the, the tone to, to be able to pull it off, you know? Well, yeah. and, and whenever in the past that we have covered covers like that, we always, uh, we put our own twist, twist and, and stamp on it to where, um, it to where people walk away and be like, Oh, that was different. Mm -hmm. So we, even if we covered a song, we would never really do it the exact way that the original artist did it. Mm -hmm. So again, this song, uh, it wasn't on our short list, but it was when we were having meetings with the Gaither music group and, and they said, man, let's, we want to hear y'all do this. But on a positive, we're really glad they wanted us to sing the song. Absolutely. It was, it was fun. I'm Absolutely. glad you did sing the song. Yeah. I mean, I had the honor to interview Nancy Jones and then mm -hmm. for you gentlemen to, record this song and like you said yeah there's those songs that they treat like sacred cows that you know it's right. like simon cowell telling contestants stop singing celine dion songs <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, and, and, and there's no and, celine on this album and I, totally, <laughs> and I totally agree with that too because she sings on a whole different level if you can't sing it as good as she can don't right. sing it right. so well, totally well it's like that. you don't touch celine you don't touch whitney houston just stay right. away from that bar okay because exactly. amen to you know that. god, god right. only created you know a couple of people to to reach that bar but you guys oh. reached definitely reached the george jones bar perfectly and what i well, love is that, and, and I heard this from a, a, a veteran recording artist, especially when he tells the, the up and comers who are, you know, they're singing in the bars, they're, they're trying to get gigs on the weekends. And, and you know how young artists can be, oh, well, I've got all my original music. Well, that's hmm. great, but slide in a cover here and there because that perks up the ears of the audience and goes, Oh, yeah. like you can pull that off. And, right. but you guys have been doing this for years. And then I come across a song that I was really surprised that you even tackled Can't Help Falling in Love. I mean, <laughs> that's walking in Elvis territory. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't kidding, bro. <laughs> Whoa. So, I mean, was that scary? Um, so. Not as so, scary as the George Jones song. That's right. That's true. <laughs> and uh, and you know what? So uh, before COVID, Langdon and I had started on Facebook what we called the Blue Room Sessions, only because we ended up in a blue room with our, our camera phone, right? And, uh, you know, we would do a little comedy and we'd pick a song. We'd do like one a week. And we were doing this to help build our audience. And I say before COVID because that's what everybody else started doing during COVID was singing from their blue room or their basement, right? We started it, Ward. Yeah, we and started there, from us. There we you started go. The, <laughs> you're the originators of the online concert. 
<laughs> exactly. And uh, so that's one of those songs that we had sang, just two two guys and two guitars. And and you know, it's been recorded a lot of different ways over the years. And, and um, but it's a, a fan favorite. It's one of those that we, when we would do it live, you know, you can see everybody singing with you, and it's just a nice moment. Uh, so yes, uh, we were really proud of that recording because. Yeah. Uh, our, our producer, Johnny Minnick is the one that wrote the string arrangements on, on that song, which just took it to another level. Uh, but the attitude and the approach was all us. You know, we, we wanted it to have the energy and, uh, and again, not sing it like Elvis, but sing it like, like, like Wilson Fairchild. And, uh, so that, that one was fun. And you'll wow. notice on those two songs, George Jones, as well as this Elvis song and, and, when we're sitting across the table, he and I, and thinking, all right, who do you want to sing this? You want me? To, you know, how who how do we want this to sound, or who wants to take, tackle this one? And so I remember Will, like with the George Jones song, he looked at me and was like, you know, you want you want to sing this? And I'm like, no, because you know, if if our fans are gonna be upset that we did it, I want them to be mad at him. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's why you let me yeah. sing it. Yeah, and yeah. In the yeah. Elvis song, Will's, Will's like, you know, you want to, you want to do this? I'm like, no, you sing this one. You mess this one up too, buddy. No, but he killed both of them, especially Jones and man. Oh, I'm telling you. Well, he I had and all that, but anyway. So, well, I, what, I was what is so funny is that you know, here's an album, and this is with Gay Gaither Music, correct? Yes, it is. Okay, yeah. so. You got to have some real cojones here to not only tackle one of the most famous George Jones songs, uh, a song that every Elvis fan knows, and then you come in to slay another giant of Johnny Cash with I Walk the Line. <laughs> All right. All right. Thank you again. We show mm -hmm. that there's a fine line between being brave and stupid. <laughs> <laughs> but I love I the version of I Walk the Line. It fits your voices perfectly. Well, uh, and again, that's part of our history. Uh, we, we've we always been huge Cash fans, but and part of that is because that's where our dads got their start in, in the business. They worked for Johnny Cash for eight years before before they went out on their own. That's where they got their start. Yeah. That's so that's incredible. So that's part of this history that Langdon and I have been digging and, and on for years, and nothing was better than hearing cash stories. Uh, Marshall Grant, that worked for our dads as their agent, he was part of the original Tennessee, too, with Johnny Cash. Chase player. And uh, so he was another one of our influences over the years. So, you know, that literally Statler made, uh, there's a reason for all these songs, that, that how we got here. And, um, but yeah, I walk the line. I mean, you know, we always do a cash song. We love the, you know, the telecaster sound and, and, uh, the sound of all those records. Uh, but I'm glad you enjoyed it. Cause that was fun to do too. Well, and that cool. song in particular with all the key changes, I think it keeps, you know, changes about four or five different times, 12, 13 times, something like, I something love like count. that. Yeah. Well, and, uh, so that really fit our ranges as well. We, yeah. we, we'd start in the middle and go up and then come back down and then finish together and, so it, it really fit. Well, when I, whenever I talk to Bill Gaither, I'm going to tell him that uh, Will and Langdon basically came in on this record as David and and took down Goliath. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my gosh. This, yes. this is the best interview we've ever, we've ever done. We well, really appreciate that. Well, you're time. welcome. But I've got to ask, one of the songs that I really liked was This Old House mm -hmm. because it's just upbeat. It just it just comes alive in the middle of this record. Okay, so uh, another selection that wouldn't have been our number one just because it's been recorded so many times by so many people, right? Yeah. And so, but that song to me and Langdon, again, we heard it through the Statler Brothers. They would use it. They've been singing that song ever since the 1950s uh, when it was pretty new um, as a quartet but it was always an encore song for them. Whenever we would see them in concert, you know, they would come back and, you know, dad would start the bass part and we knew that it was, you know, the, the last song in the show, you know, that was what it, that's what that song was to me and Langdon. And we were so glad that, that uh, Paul Sizelove and Barry Jennings wanted us to record it. It's like, well, that would be fun. Yeah, we'll do yeah. it. And then when we were in the studio, we were formulating the tempo and how we wanted to do it. And uh, Gordon Moat, said a, a great compliment he's like after we went through it once he's like well i've never heard it done like this i was like well then good that's the answer that's how we want it done and uh <laughs> let me brag on langdon 
uh, he slayed uh, the uh, the verses with the energy uh, singing this song. Uh, he almost fell out with our producers because every time he would do it and sing it in the studio, it would get better. And they'd say, okay, Langan, just sing it one more time. All right, Langan, just sing it one more time. All right, try this microphone now. So when uh, when he passed out on the floor, we knew he was done. Yeah, I was I was in a full body sweat. Ward, and, <laughs> and I'm like, I can't do it anymore, man. No. Well, okay, wait a minute. I want to I want to ask both of you a technical question because a lot of recording artists are up and coming actually do not know this. And I just recently interviewed uh, a, a young lady who is in country folk. And we got into the conversation about being in the recording studio and her producer walked her through very, different with different microphones to find the right one for her vocal because they can all be different. Now, mm -hmm. when you're in the studio, do you just walk in there? There's the mic you sing, or is do you go through different microphones to kind of find the right tone? Maybe the producer's thinking, ah, no, that's the one, or no, don't use that one. Do you go through that? So I'll, I'll let Langdon answer here in a second. <laughs> okay, yeah, but well. I'm so proud to say for the first time ever, Mr. Dr. Bond, um, we got to choose our own microphones on this project. And they were different. They, were, they he, were different. He had his microphone, I had mine. And, and uh, we learned that lesson for the first time on this project. Um, and Are we, you we kidding did, uh, me? No. no. But we, and this is because of Johnny Menick and Michael Sykes, our producers. And uh, Johnny has his own microphone collection. And we took a whole morning and and a bead and a b c and a b c d uh these mics to see what fit best with our tones and uh yes that's exactly what we did now i'll also add to that that i'm i don't know if will and i don't have the ears to hear the difference or if we just don't care <laughs> but yeah when it it when mattered it, to Johnny and Michael and we would sing and you know this one this one and this one and uh, those guys are like, yeah, that's oh, that one's warmer. Oh, that one's got a nice tone. Yes, this and we're like so. And they would ask, you know, like, what do you think? I'm like, absolutely, buddy. That's the we, one. We are so glad to have them. But coming yes. from the Statler brothers, we're a lot more about getting the joke than picking the right mic. <laughs> well, <laughs> those guys, the Statlers, not only did they, you know, early on, they four guys around one mic, mm -hmm. and uh, that they that's also right. Recorded that. What, what it was so funny is you go into the studio, you're singing into a $5,000 microphone, and then you go on the road and you grab your Shure 58, and there you go. Absolutely. Exactly. You can't go wrong with a Shure 58. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you, so, you can like, use them as a hammer and they still don't break. <laughs> so I, I totally respected uh, us yes. getting the right mics, and it was cool, and they even took us to school on – artists over the years uh back to the 40s and 50s yeah. that they would only use specific mics when they went in the studio but that was the first time we'd ever done that yeah wow you know this is this is a lesson for up and coming artists when they go into the studio for the first time to make sure that they have a producer that will actually work with them spend that half a day finding the right mic because yeah. i think it makes a huge difference in recording an album and then they learn that there is an actual difference between you know variations of ribbon microphones and things of that sort but i've got to ask what's been the fans feedback to this new album oh <clears throat> um uh, langdon said uh, in a, uh, on the camera the other day overwhelming uh i think it's been underwhelming i want more i, I want to hear more feedback <laughs> um do you uh you know what it could not be any better for us that people love Wilson Fairchild. They, they love the way me and Langdon sing. They, they love hearing our dad's music through us. Uh, but they've given it, they've all given us the credit for it, which is really great. You know, that, you know, that was one thing through our career coming along, as you can understand being second generation, you know, we were writing our own music and recording and performing, and, you know, always trying to separate ourselves from our famous fathers, right? But we, we really found out in the last 10 years that that was impossible to separate us because we look a little bit like them, we sound a little bit like them, and we have the, the same 
uh, you know, mannerisms. And, well, yeah, uh, and, but we have the same love for the music. So, uh, yeah. so when we would sing their music or anybody else's, it comes out sounding like they did, you know, and that, that's not such a bad thing. So, uh, so what the is the are, so what do so have you received feedback from those that grew up on the Statler Brothers music? Mm-hmm. Oh yes, oh yes, mm-hmm. yeah. The true fans who have known their music from from day one, um, and it is nice because they can see how we embraced their music. Uh, we again, like he was saying, we never wanted to uh, by risking being that second generation. We didn't want to be accused of or even flirt with the idea that we're riding on coattails or um, doing anything like them that we would be compared to. Uh, because we always love their music. And like you said, we, 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 sometimes we would stiff arm it to make sure that we weren't too close to it. And we were ourselves, you know, this is us. Well, and, I think, you, but it, that was a hard, there was a fine line there sometimes to, to satisfy and compromise and work it out. And, 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 I, and we did with this album by the, by the grace of God and the, in the, the forgiveness of the fans <laughs> bring it all together. Yeah. yeah well, I, I think, I think this is, I think this is the time where when there are children of the icons, I think it's better now than it was in the past. I mean, like, you know, Hank Williams jr. Had to put up with a whole lot of crap yeah. uh, because they just wanted him to sing senior songs, but he wanted to do his own and mm-hmm. he became his own superstar you know, yes. and then there was the variety of the cash and the Carter kids and, and coming yes. up. And, you know, I think the audience is is far more, I, I'm going to pray they are, far more forgiving today, except for maybe the younger generation. We don't know where they're at exactly, but how sure. are you reaching the newer generation? Um, I think uh, just through the digital platforms. Yeah. You know, I mean, you, you whether it's uh, the social media, you know, whether it's Facebook, whether it's YouTube, you're putting it out there for whoever wants to listen to it. We're, we're already seeing the results of that with Gaither, which are really cool, of who you're selling a CD for that's listening to it. Um, our Spotify numbers have been booming. So I feel like that's, you know, middle age, uh, us and younger that are, you know, that's how they listen to music now. Um, so it's it's cool. It, it's all over the place. Um but yes, we're we're reaching everybody, which thrills well, us. How did you get hooked up with Gaither Music? Because that that's a great thing. <laughs> well, yeah. you, you know what's funny coming from the the Statler Brothers family, and and uh, we've always had a great relationship with our dads, and and it's always they really kept business separate from family on purpose, uh, which was good. Uh, they've always supported what we've done, but till recently, you know, Langdon and I thought of. Uh, you know, Gaither w- was was all gospel, and we kind of thought it was unreachable. You know, like that was something that they had done some deals with our dads, releasing some of their gospel music from the gospel shows. But we didn't really think it was an outlet until about a year and a half ago. And uh, actually, Langdon uh, and his brother were in Nashville with Donnie uh, doing uh, a special with Gaither that he was hosting uh, with Brothers of the Heart. And uh, Langdon ran into Paul Sizelove and said, Hey, you know, if you ever if you ever need us or want us, we'd love to do something. He said, hey, "I'd love to talk," and that's that's where it started. Yeah, uh, we honestly, I, I had Paul yeah. in a headlock. Well, that I wasn't going to tell that. And but but that anyway, you know he was hollering uncle, and I said, "What about now, Paul?" <laughs> you said, "I'm not your uncle." <laughs> right. right. Yeah. Uh-huh. You got You got right. You got to do what you got to do. I so think. yeah, we force armed it, but we got it done. <laughs> well, you know what I love about Bill Gaither is that he thought so far ahead. You know, my gosh, how many millions of records and DVDs were sold of having all of the, the most famous gospel groups and voices come together in the round and just do sing-alongs, and it, and it became a monster hit on, on television. But it, we, yeah. And we know that those, a lot of those acts, you know, they've, they've passed away. But mm-hmm. Bill, w- what I started noticing, probably... Uh, a year or so ago is when they he started coming in and signing some of the country music acts that we've seen from the 80s and the 90s who had monster hits and now he's bringing that in and i'm like this dude is a genius (laughs) (laughs) so so yes and you're right and and i do know for for a fact uh from from bill to paul 
to Barry that it, it was intentional that not only have they reached tons of people around the world with everything they've done the last 30 years, uh, but use, utilizing these country artists that are still gospel uh, helps them get to even more people that they didn't get to the first time. So it, it, you know, it has been intentional and luckily Langdon and I were right there to fall into yeah. this category. And another genuine um, relationship back in the early nineties when our dads were doing the Sadler Brothers show on TNN, uh, that's when Gaither started putting these shows together and selling DVDs and they were buying ad time on the Sadler Brothers show. And that's when the Gaither video skyrocketed uh, and that's where it all started. And um, so it's really cool that, you know, it's, it's a, it's a family thing. It, really it is coming. It, it came full circle. Mm -hmm. It did. And then yeah. when the Statlers retired in, in 2002 with their farewell concert and the, and then the, the Gaither a few years later, picked that up that DVD and re-released it re to the Gaither audience. Yes. Mm -hmm. and, and, and it's gone, I don't know, you know, triple platinum now or something crazy. So yeah, it was really cool. Back in the nineties when the Statlers had their show, Gaither's numbers were going up because they were, uh, they were riding in a sidecar with the Statlers. Mm -hmm. And then it, like you said, that full circle came back around when they, they picked up the, the farewell concert after retirement and the Statlers numbers were still skyrocketing. So. Well, I know this is really early in, early in the year. But have you gentlemen ever thought about doing a Christmas album? Oh yes, <laughs> because it's on the list. I, I can hear, I can hear you doing Mark Lowry's "Mary Did You Know." Great oh, song. Thank you. Now, thank since you. you've already slayed some of the giants, I think that that's probably <laughs> one. I think I mean everybody's been doing that song, and and, and oh, Mark yeah. loves the mailbox money in December. <laughs> I was going to say we would do yeah. it, but we don't want he's he. Mark doesn't need any more money. Yeah, I want mailbox money. Yeah. I want to do something, you know. Uh, the, but, uh, no, that's a big one. Um, and, yes, there, there's lots of things on the list uh, that we wanted to uh, continue our relationship with with Gaither. And, and they've been nothing but great to us. And uh, and it's exactly where we want to be. This, this is how we do music, you know. Well, you know, yeah. I, can, I, can, I can think back. I can listen. And to, to, to hear your voices on, on the Statler Made album... I mean, you guys could pull off a monster duet album because I can hear you guys sing with Mark Lowry, Guy Penrod. I mean, my gosh, <laughs> the list goes on. I mean, you could do a song with Dolly, for heaven's sake, because there's just so much out there. And you mentioned earlier an artist that I absolutely love. And the moment you mentioned his name, I'm thinking, these two guys can pull off his songs. And that's Ronnie Millsap. Oh wow! Oh, wow, uh, he's a, he's 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 one of the reasons that yeah we're doing what we do today. And yeah, one Honestly. one of the best singers to yes. come through country music. Oh, uh, I can I can hear you guys sing. Stranger things have happened. Oh yeah, <laughs> yes. Oh my kidding? gosh, I can hear you guys world. literally I'll... singing that song. Oh yeah. well, thank you. You know what, man? We, that that means the world to us. We, really we've does. been down a lot of roads the the last twenty years uh, on this musical journey. Uh, but for you to appreciate it and even compare us to the greats that have come along, we really do appreciate it. And seriously, when you say things about us and our name in, in the, in the same sentence with Guy Penrod and Mark and That's Ronnie right. yeah. and, uh, the Statlers and Bill Gaither and all these people that, uh, that really, that's, that's, that's not good for our ego or we're, we're going to be it hard, is good hard for time our ego. getting through the doorway. <laughs> I, I'm, I'm, I'm here to, I'm I here to feed it. Willing. I'm here to feed that ego anytime you need it. <laughs> good. <laughs> Feed it every time you need it. I that, like that. It. Really is yeah. sweet. Well, <laughs> where can everyone buy the brand new album Statler made? Yep. So it's everywhere. So if uh, if you want us to sign it for you, and we will, uh, we'll even can, sign our own names. We're not yeah, somebody else's. That's our, right. Our own names. Um, you can uh, you can get it through WilsonFairchild.com. Um, through our store. And that takes um, you to the Statler Brothers gift shop, yes. which is handling it. At, or you can go to the statlerbrothers.com, but if you want to. However, that's that's the only way you can get it signed is we will do it through that. Right. Yeah. Um, but if not, through gaither.com, uh, everywhere their music is sold, you can get it. Um, and then, of course, anywhere uh, on the streaming platforms. If, uh, if it's the CD, the album, the music, it's everywhere. And uh, if you want to see it, if you if you don't watch DVDs, but you want to stream it, 
you can go to Gaither TV Plus, mm -hmm. and for like four ninety nine a month, you can watch it as many times as you want. Oh, that's cheap, man. Four ninety nine. Yeah, is, you can see me as much as you want. Yeah, sometimes what I just deal. put it on at home and just walk. What off. a deal! I don't even watch it. Mm -hmm. Well, it's a lot cheaper than Netflix. <laughs> yes, it is. True, it sure is. Yes. Yeah, we're hoping they're going to price themselves out of business, and you have to come watch Gaither TV yes. Plus. Yes. Yeah, I, <laughs> and I know Bill would appreciate that. <laughs> yes, that's right. He needs the money. <laughs> yeah, it's like Mark keeps telling Bill, dude, you, you can't take all that with you when you go. Right. <laughs> that's right. right. That's Le right. Leave some crumbs down here for us. Success Please. is a beautiful thing. Yeah, yeah. Bill will, will show up at the pearly gates and he'll be the first one trying to sell a Bible to Jesus. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I say that with the utmost respect. Absolutely. Of course, of course you do, and we agree. <laughs> and you're exactly right. Mm -hmm. Well, gentlemen, it has been an absolute huge honor and a pleasure to have you on the show today, and I've had a blast. Mm. Uh, well, we have too. So, so great to meet you. Thanks for having us on. Uh, we look forward to seeing you at a concert soon. Please come see us if we're anywhere close to you. Yeah. And um, and uh, th thanks for for loving the album. It was a lot of fun to make. Well, you've got our number. You call anytime. We, hey, we, I will do that. And uh, yeah, when you come through Texas, you let me know, and we will be uh -huh. there and be in the audience. Because, ladies and gentlemen, what do we always sell on this show? You buy the music, you buy the merch, you buy the concert mm -hmm. ticket. You go support your favorite artist because it is the music that makes the memories. And if you want to make more memories, we got to buy these things because. People don't do this stuff for free and uh, <laughs> stop downloading because there's nothing there, but buy it, hold it in your hand, put it on your turntable or your CD player and enjoy it. Put your headphones on or just blast it through the house. And I can tell you this, you need to head over to wilsonfairchild.com get all things, <clears throat> excuse me, all things Wilson Fairchild. Find out where they're going to be in near your hometown. Buy the records, or you can just go to gaither.com. And remember, there is nothing better than traditional country music, especially with the richness only, and I said only, of the voices of Will and Langdon Reed can bring. So, gentlemen, again, man, many blessings to you in 2024, and... And I expect this album to do big things for you gentlemen. And I can't wait for more music from you. And when you do bring more music, you got to come back. Uh, God bless you. And we will. We, we can't wait, wait, man. This man. has been great. Thank we, you. We like knowing good people and you're one of the best. Yes. Hey, man, I appreciate the compliment, but I'll just give all the glory to the Lord for that one. And amen, uh, amen. amen, amen. to that. And ladies and gentlemen, I want to thank you for watching and listening. And as for me, I'll see you next time.